Were there times when you had just had it up to here and you couldn't take any more? She never was thinking to leaving this whole case, but she was uh, crying and fighting against Billy and against the whole case. At one point, Poppy admits, she was so fed up she burned half the photographs. Today the feeling is other because she knows very well about the whole case and things about the Pleiadians and this is very important for her. Listen here. Wow, you recorded that here? My wife recorded this one here, and in the meantime, I've been there down very standingly with the older recorder. You had another recorder down yes. there? How high was the ship above you? Uh, about 60 meters. 60 meters. How far would you estimate it is from here oh, down here today? I think some 300 meters. The sounds bear no resemblance to anything Stevens has heard before. Maya gives him both tapes for analysis. Overwhelmed by the evidence they have gathered, the team meets to plan the next stage of the investigation. We're getting it all. We'll leave tonight? Yeah. Okay, on uh, Meyer. I think Meyer is a very sincere and honest type person. What do you think, Steve? Has anything changed since you were here? The man seems to be the same, but uh, there's some things changing around him. He's, he's, got, he's better off, he's got more people around him, more things are happening, but he still is basically sincere. Mm -hmm. What about the psychological aspects to the man? Do you think it's possible that he's a little schizoid? I mean, it's difficult to tell what, if, it, if what he's saying the Pleiadians are telling him is actually coming from them or coming from him. Well, how do you determine oh, that? Uh, well, we can never prove too many that other people involved. aspect of the case. Others have seen the same thing. There's a, a terrific cross-section of people here. You've got a school teacher, you've got a commercial pilot, you've got a businessman, you've got a CPA. They're as good as any average cross-section of society we've got. And they all tested him themselves to their own satisfaction before they ever got this far. Well, I think we ought to go back and throw the book at this one. Everything we can, top technology we can get involved. And I think we ought to let the chips fall where we may and just see what we find. We're going to run down and say goodbye to Meyer and we'll tell him goodbye I'll for you. Give him my best. Okay. okay. Question. I'll see you later. They've done what they can here. Meyer has turned over all his material, but he has one more surprise in store. So we want to thank you for all your time and trouble. Oh, yeah. Okay, just a moment, wait. Okay. I have you something. Here. What's this? Metal samples. Metal, Metal samples. samples? Yeah. Where did you get these? I got it from Symbiose, and she brought them from uh, Era. Are they extraterrestrial? Yeah. Metal samples. The kind of hard evidence Stevens had hoped for. We got the Vogel tape in. Great. Back in Phoenix, the investigators begin to sort out the mass of material Maya gave them. There are hundreds of photographs, the eight millimeter films, it's, it's sound tapes of the beam ships and the fragments of metal. They know they will have to call in scientists from a variety of fields to help assess the evidence. The task appears monumental. Thanks, Tom. Tom, what about you? Yeah, I'll have one too. Okay. They decide to check the photos first. If these are fake, the rest doesn't matter. Here we have our image. The ground is below. We'll place this on the platen, emulsion side up in order to focus on the emulsion. The first step involves translating the photographic image into digital information the language computers can read. We can start this machine from the point which it is at now and scan 500 lines, 500 points per line at a very small aperture and watch the result of this scan being placed, digital information keep in mind, onto a display. All right, over here on our display we can observe what the densitometer is doing this microdensitometer is the same one used to help analyze the photos beamed back from space by the U.S. Pioneer mission. And tell it that we want to go five microns between each pixel. It will be digitizing a half centimeter square, scanning the first lines. 
The digital information will be sent on for an analysis that will take weeks to complete. Meanwhile, Welch and the elders decide to learn what they can of the history of UFO experiences. But uh, can you give us some more background on this phenomenon? What is this all about? Well, it's not a new thing, Lee. This thing's been going on for a long time. How many sightings have there been? One of the researchers calculated that uh, there may be as many as 70,000 reports in a year, worldwide. Is there anything these sightings have in common? Okay, there are some common things. Uh, commonly reported. First of all, they're always accidental. UFO pictures, up to this point at least, are accidental. They happen once and they're gone. Is there anywhere that they show up more than other areas? Here's some stuff here that, that began way back. These are, these are documented cases. Some of these are even classics. Photographs. Here's one from Argentina. But this whole thing is full of them. This one is full of them. That's full of them. All of those are full of such cases. In Stevens' files are over 3,500 photographs of UFOs, some from early in this century. Most were single sightings, some observed by several people at the same time. In Perry, Ohio, the whole town watched a UFO at twilight for 30 minutes. In Brazil, a Navy photographer took a series of photos of a UFO flying over his vessel. Observers at NASA have spotted UFOs at our space launches. Tientsin, China, Woonsocket, Rhode Island, Norway, Corsica, Japan, New Jersey. These are among the sightings that are reported. No one can guess how many go unreported. And they're pretty much all over the world. I don't think you could pick out a single place and say that there are more UFO sightings there than any other place. They're, it's a worldwide phenomena, and primitives as well as advanced societies all view them and they see the same things. What's the public's reaction been to all of this? Well, there was a poll made about three years ago, I think, where they asked the question, I think the question was, how many people believe that UFOs exist? And this has been a progressive thing. It's been growing. And the last one showed something like 65% of the American population believes that a UFOs exist. Why don't they contact our national leaders and land someplace like on the White House lawn? I'm not sure that national leaders haven't been contacted. Uh, there is some indication that uh, various world leaders, even church leaders, have been contacted. Mary, do you have that uh, file that we had on spectrographic analysis that we did? Oh, yeah, Tom, it's As right. the investigation continues, results from the testing begin to come in to the intercept office in Phoenix. Hey, Lee. Hey, Tom. What's up? Just got this back. We sent this photograph over to Neil Davies. Just got his report. Neil back. Davis. Physicist, aerospace industry subcontractor. Right, okay. Examined the photograph with microdensitometer. Also, these you're seeing here are the black and white color separations that he did. And let's see what the results were here. Hmm. Examination of these plots did not reveal any details which would cast doubt upon the authenticity of the photograph. Hmm. And there's more. Color copy names, color separation. Nothing was found to indicate a hoax. And his conclusion is even more interesting. Let's see. Black specks. Nothing was found in the examination of this print which could cause me to believe that the object in the photo is anything other than a large object photographed a distance from the camera. Maya reported six different configurations of Pleiadian beam ships. Davis analyzed what the investigators designated as Variation 2. Variation 3 now goes to computer analyst Jim Dilatosa. This is the new picture that we digitized last week using the microdensitometer. We transferred it over to floppy disk here. Let's look at the first map in low-pass filtering. Why these particular colors on the screen? What are we seeing? I mapped it in such a way that the real colors uh, are not what we're seeing but one shade of a color that's really similar to another one, uh, like two shades of red, are in high contrast so that we can really see the difference. I see. Have you found any anomalies yet of any kind? Anything I find strange things, but nothing that would tell me that someone's tampered with the pictures. I see. Nothing in indicating a hoax method or indicating superimposition or anything like that? Nothing that I can find. 